Alright, welcome back everybody. We are getting ready for game point match, which means that if Psystorm Gaming takes this match, that will be the match. If they take this game, that will be the match. But before we go into this game, I want to give a big thanks to Dagor, one of the StarCraft Reddit admins, for his amazing $150 contribution to the prize pool. That money is going to the players, and you all can support us just like him by donating to our Matcharino page. Remember, that amazing free beef jerky for donations of $10 or more is still open. And once again, our Patreon is another opportunity to support us and future events directly. Anyways, going into game point. So all you Psystorm fans out there, this is your team chance to take the match. Nocturnal Gamers will also be fighting vigorously, though. So make sure we get ready for this. Before... If this is indeed the last match, then we will be jumping into some viewer mono battles, so I will be getting a lobby set up for that pretty soon, and you all can go ahead and jump in and play some games with us after these matches. Anyways, get hyped up for game point! Take it away, Shaft. Alright, now he did mention um, mono battles, so just a heads up, <laughs> join us in the channel Hope TL on Bnet, and you can get in those games. And we're going to be uh, hopping into a Zerg vs. Protoss now, Sluggy. On Interloper, we're about a minute into the game, so can you give us a breakdown of what you're expecting so far? Um, if I remember right, this is the first ZVP in the whole Team League, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. This is actually the first time we've had a Protoss play at all. You know, I can't say no to Variety, and first time we're seeing a ZVP, that's always exciting. Now, uh, the recent balance uh, amongst the pro gamers between Zerg and Protoss has been a little bit iffy and now the main problem is because as you've seen uh, the previous WCS is that the three Stargate Oracle is really strong and there's no proper way to deal with it so we'll have to see what kind of builds the Protoss will pull up in this game uh, but let's introduce the players first all right, here on the bottom right-hand side, playing for Psystorm Gaming, currently responsible for, what, two, maybe three of their victories so far? It's Warren! Spawning on the top left, it's our Protoss player, representing Protoss for the first time in this league. It's Nocturnal Gamers, Antoine Des. Yeah, so... Mothership core is on the way. Everything looking very, very standard so far. Are you expecting like the standard macro game here? I'm um, actually I'm quite interested to see the mothership core coming up. That is a really safe choice. Usually, what the Protoss players do is that they skip uh, that and they go for a Stargate straight away. But now we see why we actually don't see a Stargate. It's because it's going for a Robo, and actually, very fascinatingly, it's being built as a part of the wall, so the Zerg player doesn't, doesn't even have to scout for that, they, just, they can just park the Overlord in the usual spot and they'll see it. Yeah, um, hold the cast for a second, I actually just did something dumb and revealed some information on hiding it. Oh, um, should I, should I continue? Yes. Okay, so <laughs> almost uh, every time these days we don't really see Robo, oh, but here comes the Deadly Pilot Overcharge and that Overlord Oh, uh, that Overlord could have been saved, <laughs> and as Warren says, whoops. Uh, yeah, because it was a part of the wall, it was just a free giveaway in terms of scouting. Now, usually 9 out of 10, ten you... well, no, sorry about that. Uh, 9 out of 10, you won't be seeing a Robo in ZVP these days, and that's quite interesting because you either see a fast Twilight Council for a uh, charge lot or a depth timing, or you see Stargate for an Oracle because an Oracle yeah, so much utility. Mm -hmm. But right now, it seems that it's going for a rather cheesy attack, if I'm not mistaken. It's going mm -hmm. for the Warp Prism. Uh, it's already made a sentry, so it's obviously there to pull up energy so it can use force fields later on. I think it might take on the uh, put a force field on at the ramp and mm -hmm. kill some drones. That could possibly be it. So it's going to be interesting to see what Warren will um, have in response to the. Well, yeah, ironically, right. Roach Warren's already about a third of the way through a Roach Warren. I think this right. may actually be fairly beneficial considering what he's up against. Oh, definitely. Uh, I think if he is doing what I'm thinking, then he has definitely got this game. Because 
The roaches can turn into ravagers, which in, can, in turn can destroy force fields. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's actually a huge advantage because force fields right. are the backbone of any major Protoss attack. Definitely, it, it, definitely. Um, so Queen's oh, going ahead repelling this, and that might be... Yeah, a... if this is uh, stopped too much, then it can be quite difficult, but... Uh, let's see what the Zerg player is doing right now. And now, mm -hmm. there's several choices. If you have sentries, then it's going to be swamped, absolutely destroyed over the road trash. And third base, you're just going to have to let it go. And with no additional tech that's mm -hmm. been undergoing, Protoss is definitely on the losing side. Uh, compared to that, uh, Zerg player can also choose to drone up, which mm -hmm. seems to be uh, not what they're doing, but they're making more roaches. Yeah, so roaches, uh, maybe not the best choice, considering the third base is on the way. This is g definitely going to be like a three base timing, if it's a timing at all. Um, Warren looks to be taking a fourth base, but really, uh, it's kind of late. Uh, right, so at six minute of the game, 56 uh, drones, 57 probes. It's kind of a, a bit low for the Zark side, but I think that was a safe choice because he was yeah. not entirely sure on uh, what he was facing against. And though we mm -hmm. saw no Ravagers, the Roaches definitely meant that he was respecting his opponent, he was playing it safe. Mm hmm. So we got the Hallucinate, he's gonna get some scouting information here. Sporkhaw shuts that down, but only a little bit of energy burned. Really useful uh ability of sentries to just you know they can attack but you can also find out if you should attack. right so what we're seeing here is that the hydra list then is going up and fascinatingly enough it's going for a melee attack upgrade so mm -hmm. immediately from that we can deduce that we can strike off the possibility of a roach hydra attack mm -hmm. which was popular back in heart of the swarm but not so much in legacy of the void because it's such an inferior composition once protoss units get some uh tech options mm -hmm. so it's going to be the standard link bank hydra yeah standard um so with the Zealot Legs on the way, we've already got Archons and stuff, um, Immortals. Uh, are Banelings really the best option here? Banelings, uh, Ling Bane Hydra is still definitely quite amazing against this composition. And oh, yeah. as we can see, well, uh, yes. But you, typically it, it, it involves like how many Banelings you make in relationship to Hydras, how you're choosing to spend your gas. Like, would you rather see a heavy Baneling concentration or like more Hydras? Uh, but actually, here we have a uh, Ling run by, but it shouldn't really do much because no. it's got solid defense with the Mothership Core. But anyways, uh, to carry on back on to what you were saying, uh, it, I guess it really needs a fair balance. The thing with Ling Bane Hydra is because they provide such a great, um, how do you call it, mm -hmm. synergy with each other so yeah. that it's you can't really skip, uh, skimp out on one side of the equation. Yeah, it feels like he's definitely powering more the Banelink side with the upgrades, with um, the the only four Hydras being made at a time. So I, that's right. why I was asking. Okay. Now, something I want to mention is the interesting base location of the Protoss. Mm -hmm. right. Usually what Protoss players do uh, is that they put it on the side of the map, so it's mm -hmm. easier to defend. But mm -hmm. if it's forward uh, placed on this forwarded position, then mm -hmm. it means that the Protoss is definitely going to attack. And yeah. Archlet Archon, it's going to be a strong timing. Yeah, and he's going ahead and clearing out a lot of this creep, but going very deep. Baneling's going to be rolling here into this third base location. Does uh, kill off that uh, cannon and... Oh, ooh, that was a beautiful hit, taking out 14 probes. Dude, now, that was intense. With plus two melee attack, that uh -huh. is definitely what you have to take advantage of, because probes, workers, they go down in one hit. Mm -hmm. And those cannons go oh, down but really quickly ultra, to the uh, round. Uh, they need to retreat. If there are no roaches or links to buffer for them, these uh, charge lines are going to absolutely decimate them. Yeah, links and bane links are going to be swirling around, going to try and get an attack off, or maybe get a full off surround. It's hard to be 100% certain, yeah, this is going to be a more of a counter attack. Now, but, every, uh, every moment that the Protoss player spends time on creep, mm -hmm. uh, he has to be nervous because that is giving extra time that the Zerg player is knowing uh, what to do. Mm -hmm. and seems that immediately he can't win the such a beefy composition from the Protoss army, so he's going for a base trade at least. Yeah, Baneling's about, uh, waiting for the perfect moment to roll right. Oh, oh no, Baneling's are wasted on the Archons, you can't do that. Yeah, that, that was what I was worried about, man. That's why right. I feel like Hydralisk would have been a much, much better choice against such low-range units in the mortal Archon force. 
Right, this composition for the Protoss army looking very strong. Uh, the supplies favoring Zerg a bit, but they definitely need to be together right now. Yeah, um, and it looks like, oh, uh, dude, he's just rally jacking everything. He split, he split the entire production of Zerg. He's got two bases on the right and one right. on the left. If he can take out the Archons, then these Hydralis just might be able to take out the Immortals with the incoming reinforcement. Now, the, there are charge lines coming on the way, and that's when you really need those failings, because without protection, Hydralis are going to go down, and that's what's happening right now. 33 drip pro class, and that is GG, unfortunately. Nocturnal Gamers staying alive, uh, not quite tying it up, but it is currently 3-2 Psystorm's lead. Psystorm going to get another chance in this uh, team league uh, to an end this, but I don't know it yet. Dude, these guys are playing such good games. <laughs> Chef, uh, your voice is going out robot again. I, I couldn't quite <laughs> catch the... <laughs> I have a horrible internet, so I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you handle. <laughs> right. So yeah, Nocturnal Gamers took that uh, victory, and ZVP. While people usually say that, definitely Zerg favorite because it's Lingbane Hydra, but definitely mm -hmm. Antoine showed, demonstrated a powerful skill when it comes to timing and just hitting at the right timing. He was able to take that victory. Yeah, man. Very awesome play. Well, right. we are going to be going to a word from our sponsors while we set up the next match. So, Felipe, take it away. And just let them know why we have coins on the coin flip screen, because it's been on the chat quite a bit. <laughs> so the reason that we have coins on the coin flip screen is because it is called the... We, we call it the coin flip screen because it initially was just the screen that we used for coin flips before we more expanded this in C position, and now I occupy the screen for a much greater period of time. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to a word from our sponsors. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not gonna teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.